I'm Michael Golden. I'm CEO and co-founder of EduCurious, and I'm pleased to share a little bit about our story with you this afternoon. Uh, we've been really blessed over the last few, six and a half years to have an amazing array of funders and supporters, Lucas, Gates, uh, Aspen, J.P. Morgan Chase, Boeing. So we're really thrilled to have continuous support from them and an amazing team of technologists, education, educators and education leaders, and business people all collaborating to solve this thorny issue of how do we prepare young people for their future. So we know they have to be prepared by giving them the capability to learn and empower them to be engaged and motivated to learn the knowledge, skills, and dispositions to be successful in school and in work, and also to be prepared and exposed to an array of professions and how you get there. So that's what we've been working on. The need is obvious. Jobs of the future and jobs today require a different skill set and different set of uh, mindset. Educators need supports. We believe in the power of teaching and we have to give them an array of uh, supports and tools and other uh, capabilities to be successful in their classroom. We also know student, students are and need to be flexible and agile because they're going to be put in many different contexts. And in addition, as you heard this morning at the keynote, there are 40% of employers actually say that the workforce, the skill set of the workforce coming in is ill-prepared for the jobs they have. So something has to change, something had to be different. And so we recognized any solution we would create had to incorporate all of these skills and specifically focused on achieving college and career success by giving young people a love of learning and ownership of their work and giving them real world challenges to take on and to, to learn all of the content and skills through the application of those challenges and the solutions that they would develop. So we start at uh, project-based learning that's adaptable and relevant to students their specific capabilities, their interests, and their identities. And they're solving real world, real, pro, real world problems built on learning sciences and improvement science. And they continue along until they prevent, present their performance tasks that solves that problem. Next, we've created a national network of teachers who all collaborate together and change their instructional practice together as they come down and reposition themselves in the, in the learning as activators in their classrooms. We've taken technology to a new level in using ways, innovative ways, to have young people interact with working professionals and other value adds to technology, especially in terms of creativity and collaboration. And finally, we've recognized that young people have to be exposed, have awareness and explorations of careers and what it takes to get to those jobs. And that's done through a network of national volunteers we have uh, called Working Professional Experts. So here are a couple examples. How do I get my opinion heard on matters I care about? That's something young people really want to have a voice, and they really want to have ownership in their learning. So for example, we're working in Atlanta, where young people are thinking about implicit bias. In our context, in our world today, that's a really important thing, particularly for young men of color. And they recognize there's a lot of issues they have to understand in the multifaceted aspects of those issues. So they have to do research, evidence-based argument, and they're in Atlanta going to organize a hackathon where they'll build an app to test implicit bias. And then they're going to partner with the Martin Luther King Museum there to, to share this, this tool with the public. So they have a performance task, which is building an app. And they have an impact on their community while they're doing English and math. In the notion of climate change and ecological change, as well as environmental health, there are a group of uh, young biology students in southern Illinois working with a city manager to determine whether the investment in a green LEED certified parking lot in their town was a good idea. And they're testing the water quality of the effluent of the green, paved, and unpaved parking lots in town, presented their findings, and now city council has passed a new policy that no, no, building, no parking lots will be built that aren't green LEED certified. So they also have a legacy in their community. And many of them aspire to be environmental scientists because they worked with them along the way. Technology adds a, a variety of capabilities, the ability to take disciplinary tools like software Hollywood screenwriters use or centrifuges Mayo Clinic geneticists use, having all kids read at their own level and adaptive technology to support audio files and vocabulary widgets and a variety of other multimedia and analytics to make sure students are learning. 
I mentioned the expert network. These are volunteers in every uh, facet of industry and life, and they expose young people to what it's like in their world, how they got to where they are. Sometimes it's through Skype, sometimes it's through video, and oftentimes it's through discussion boards and indirect and direct feedback to youth. And then finally, direct and deliberate career connected experiences. Awareness of what it is that it takes to get to a certain career and what careers are possible because we're all a product of our network and you can't try for something you don't know exists. So being able to catapult yourself into the future by understanding where and how you can choose and leverage your interests and your identities. Taking that to the next level and getting more experiences and exposure through networking events or virtual mentors, and finally getting real world experiences like job shadows and internships. We now are in 20 states over the last six and a half years, grown to about 28,000 youth, and uh, the outcomes are quite significant. Most importantly, students taking ownership and agency for their learning, educators repositioning themselves as activators and creating vibrant learning communities, and experts, volunteer professionals saying, I want to give back, I want to help the pipeline of workers, and I want to prepare our society for the future. So as we expand, we think of ourselves as a catalyst for learning. We love to partner, we love to collaborate with others, and I open the door to conversations with all of you to figure out how we can make this possible for every one of the 55 million students in the United States. So here's our contact information. We look forward to empowering and exciting young people, to giving them creativity and the tools to be successful, and a path forward with awareness and understanding and experiences to make that a real, specific, and leverageable path to the future. Thank you very much.